Spirit World Experiences, Part 2. One thing seemed peculiar to me. I was able to read the telegrams as it ran along the wires as easily as I could read the pages of a book. I could see, the, see President Rich when he received the telegram in Chattanooga. He walked the floor, wringing his hands with the thought in his mind, how can I send a message to his father? The message was finally sent. However, I could follow... However, and I could follow it on the wire. I saw the station and the telegraph operator at Price, Utah. I heard the instrument click as the message was received and saw the operator write out the message and sent, and sent it by phone from Price to Huntington. I also saw clearly the Huntington office and the man who, who received the message. I could even see the people on the street as the message was circulated. I did not have to hear what was said, for I was able to read their thoughts from their countenances. The message was delivered to my aunt, who went out with others to find my father. In due time he received the message. He did not seem to be overcome by the news, but began to make preparations to meet the body. I then saw my father at the railroad station in Price, waiting for the body to arrive. Apparently he was unaffected, but when he heard the whistle of the train which was carrying my body, he went behind the depot and cried as if his heart would break. While I had not been accompanied while I had been accompanied, accompanying the body en route, I was still able to see what was going on at home. The distance apparently did not affect my vision. As the train approached the station, I went to my father's side, and seeing his great anguish, I informed my companion that I would return. He expressed his approval of my decision, and said he was pleased with the choice I had made. By some spiritual power, all these things had been shown to me as they would occur if I did not return to my body. Immediately upon making this choice or decision, my companion said, Good, your progenitors will be very pleased with your decision. I asked why, and was told that it was their desire that I should return my body and hunt up my father's genealogies and do their work in the temple. In all this time, no one had offered to touch me or shake my hand. Just how my spirit entered the body, I cannot tell, but I, I saw the apostle sh uh, place his hands upon my head upon the head of my prostate body, and almost instantly I realized that the change had come and I was again in the body. The first thing that I knew, that I, knew I felt a warm, life-giving, I felt a warm, life-giving spot on the crown of my head which passed through my entire body, going out to the tips of my fingers and toes. I then heard distinctly the same words that had been pronounced by Elder Grant when I was set apart for my mission, go in peace and return in safety. After entering my body, I saw no more of, of the messengers who had been accompanying, accompanying me, but I had a vivid recollect, recollection of all that had taken place. The local elder who had been left to attend me, but who became frightened at my condition and went away, had not yet returned. But I later learned that he had gone to Sunday school and that the, at the close of exercises he notified them of my death. The saints, elders, and friends were now gathered outside the paling or fence discussing matters and trying to decide just what to do. I was still very thirsty, so I arose to get a drink, but found that the water was warm. 
I then carried the bucket of warm water to the edge of the balcony and threw it out. Then I went down the hall, or then I went down to the well, which was 75 feet deep, and drew a fresh bucket of water and quenched my thirst. The saints, elders, and friends who were out of the fence were observing all this, but they feared to come near me. Finally, Brother Morton, <laughs> at, at whose home I was stopping, came through the gate and up the walk towards me. But before reaching me, he turned icy cold and stood still. I went up to him and shook his hand and invited all of them to come in and handle me, telling them that a spirit did not have flesh and bones like me. Brother Morton looked at me, felt of me, turned me around, then went and looked at the bed on which I had been lying while sick. He then back, or came back and handled me again and said, I never was so scared in, in my life, for I thought you were a spirit. I told him that I was not na that I was not now a spirit, but in, but a real tangible person. How could you carry that bucket of water? He said, throw it out and draw another. When oh, for over a month you have you had been when for over a month you had had to be waited upon, and finally we all thought you were dead. I explained that I had been completely healed by an apostle and had come back to stay with them. I observed that the people in the spirit world were busy and that they were perfectly organized for the work they were doing. It seemed to me a continuation of the work we are doing here, something like going from one stake of Zion to another. There was nothing there that seemed particularly strange to me, everything being quite natural. I have often been asked how long I was in the spirit world. The last I remember of hearing mortal sounds was the singing of when Sunday school commenced. When I got up and drew the water, Sunday school had closed. The local elder who had attended me did not notify them of my death until just as they were closing, Sunday school was held one and a half hours. An Experience with Death by Mary Johnson Shumway About the 6th of April, 1891, in Pinedale, Ap Apache County, Arizona, I had been ailing quite, quite a long while and seemed gloom and a deep gloom was over me. I had doctored for my troubles as best I could, but it seemed to, to do no good. I could not sleep on an account of evil spirits. I had no appetite, and this trouble had been preying on me about two weeks. When one day I felt so bad, I went to bed. A terrible feeling came over me. I felt it coming upon my feet and and I was in a terrible sweat. I sweat so much the sheets had to be changed. It was different from any ordinary sickness, and it lasted though or through the day until nearly night. I sent for the elders to administer to me, but it did not seem to ease me, and I grew weaker and worse for the sweating. In the evening, it's it seemed that all of a sudden something fell on me and crushed me. The lady attending me, Letty Bryan, saw something had happened to me and she called my husband. He came in and took me in his arms and then it, it became all dark for me as far as this world was concerned. A light shone round about me, round, I'm sorry, a light sh shone round me and about me and the veil was raised so that I could see into the spirit world. I saw a great multitude of people, and I looked beyond them to what seemed like a sea of glass. As far as I could see, there were beautiful flowers, shrubbery, artistic landscaping, and everything was so heavenly and glorious. I couldn't tell about it, not even about what I saw, but, but I said, 
I am now in a bright light. I then told my husband what I wanted to do with the children because I was going to go. At that moment, the light left me and went right through the roof of the house, and I was aware of myself lying on the bed again. I told them to bring my children to me I was going to, because I was going to leave. I had seen all these things, and I did not want to live here any longer. That was the feeling I had. The children and my friends became, or came in and surrounded my bed. The house was crowded and full of people. I kissed the children goodbye and told them how I wanted them to live. I began to beg, they began to beg me to stay and I asked why I couldn't, and asked why I couldn't stay. I told them, I guess I will come back and stay a while if it is the Lord's will. I felt that I had come back into a dark, gloomy world, far less inviting than the one that I had just left. The elders got the oil and anointed me and stood around my bed and prayed for me. After they got through praying, I knew I was going to live. My mouth had been set so that I could hardly talk. But when they prayed for me, it began to be loosed. During this experience, my body had been cold to the waist, and it was a week longer before I, they got me warmed up to normal temperature. After that, all my misery was gone. The trouble was rebuked by the priesthood, and it left me, though, uh, through, though I took no medicine. The same night, I heard heavenly singing as plain as if it were just in the next room. I heard that when I asked God if the Book of Mormon was true. And if Joseph Smith was a true prophet, I, I, heard, uh, I heard heavenly singing as the Holy Spirit came down on me like fire. So I know what that, that's like to hear the angels and the spirits in heaven singing praises to God. It's... It's an awesome experience. I uh, don't know how to explain it. Anyway, continuing. That same night I heard heavenly singing as plain as if it were just in the next room. I heard all the parts very clearly. The hymn that they sang was God Moves in Mysterious Ways. <laughs> it's, it's interesting because when I heard the singing, it wasn't a specific song. It was like shouts of joy and praise and um it wasn't in it wasn't in unison like when you're singing a song so this is a little different than the experience that i had but anyway continuing the hymn they sang was god moves in mysterious ways i heard that singing once again after that and asked the people near me if they could not hear it too it seemed so plain, I thought, surely they ought to be able to hear it. However, they said they could not hear it at all. Since then, I have come to learn about this radio, and I think, and I am led to think that I was able to hear it because I was in tune with the source from which it came. That's interesting, too, because like right before I went on my mission, so I was Baptist before my mission, and... Um, like there's a lot of anti things that I was taught. And one of the things that I saw on the temple museum was an upside down pentagram, which is on the temple museum mural in Salt Lake. And it really bothered me. And, and after my conversion, um, I wanted to get my endowments out in Salt Lake before I went on my mission. And um, because I had been there in the spirit uh, just a few years before that, I was taken up and Jesus showed me around in the temple before my conversion. And uh, the last room I went into was the Holy of Holies. So I wanted to go see, when I got my endowments, I wanted to see if the rest of this uh, this experience that I had was right. And it was. And But I was really... Um, still bothered by that upside down pentagram that's on the the temple um, or at the museum